We've got a 2015 Newmar Base Star 2903. We're going to go through every section of the motorhome, starting with the driver's compartment. The driver's seat is electronically controlled. There is a switch down here that'll make it go back, forward, up, down, little adjustments here as well. This lever here, if I pull this back, it allows the chair to swivel. Um, the, in order to get the chair all the way around, steering wheel has to be all the way up, armrest has to be down, and the chair has to be as far forward as possible. So then you can flip that around, and you're part of the living room. Uh, there are a few problems here. I am 5 foot 11, so not overly tall. If I were to put this all the way back, I would be hitting the beam of the full wall slide. When this full wall slide is in, it comes to about here, and I can't put the seat back that far. I don't know why there's the ability to go so far back when you can't use it. This is Equalizer Systems Auto Level. We typically manually level the coach. There is an auto level setting, but it kind of makes the RV tilt back and forth and we don't like that. So what we end up doing is we have a level for the coach. Typically what we like to do is plant the front, then plant the rear. These are the down arrows. And then once we get it in position, we will balance left and right sides. Uh, in order to retract, you hit the all retract button and everything comes back up and it'll let you know when it's done. You do need to engage the parking brake to use this. If I did not have the parking brake on, the red light would come on. If I were to take the parking brake off right now, with the ignition turned on, there's a safety system in the coach that would automatically start bringing the jacks up. Because what you don't want to try to do is to drive away with your jacks down. This is to adjust the mirrors. Uh, left for left, right for right, and then back to center to kind of turn it off. Uh, this button here, when turned on, red light will come on. This is a side view mirror heater, just in case it's fogged up or you have snow or ice on it. Over here at the top, I have a battery boost. This is used if your starting battery is dead and you kind of hear a boom, boom when you try to start the RV. By pushing this, you link the coach battery with the house batteries and you can get a nice good charge and start your engine. Um, we were told to make sure we actually have, we have the generator running so we get a nice charge from the batteries. Here, these are the overhead fans. If I push up, turns the fans on high, down, low, and then off. These are great when we're going through the mountains and we don't want to run the AC. This is the generator start button. Simply push up and hold that until your generator starts. When you want to stop it, just push the stop button. Here is, here's the headlight knob, parking on. One thing to note, if you're not running your engine, make sure to turn this off. The lights will stay on and there will be no beeping noise to remind you to turn them off. This adjusts the brightness of your dash. If I go all the way up, it turns on our reading light. As far as the driver area, the steering wheel has a tilt up and down. Cruise control on the left, on, off. Here's your set button, coast, resume. Windshield wipers on the left with turn signal gear selection and there's a nice uh, tow haul feature for this so anytime we have the jeep in the back we turn the tow haul on and it kind of adjusts the um, rpms at which the transmission will shift and makes it a lot easier for us to drive with the jeep uh, standard instrument gauge there is an info button if i select the info button i'm currently on trip there's the weather outside how many miles until empty, and total engine hours. Here's a dash cam. Uh, it's always on when you're driving, so if I were to put on my turn signal, that would be the right camera, and it's covered with water right now. Left camera. If I just wanna turn it on while I'm driving, I can do that, and I typically have it set to the rear camera, although you can select any camera you want it to stay on. There is a night setting. 
It's currently on day, auto, night. Um, I like to leave it on auto. The volume button. So there is a microphone in the back of the RV that if I were to turn the volume up, you might be able to hear the rain out there. But what's really nice is when Kate is back there, I can hear her talking to me, telling me to keep coming back or that the Jeep is hooked up, any number of things. When I'm driving, I like to keep it on zero, otherwise you hear all the road noise. This button is for our front shade. Push it down, the shade will drop. Um, the shade is a little odd. Sometimes it'll come down on its own. Sometimes we have to hold it all the way down. So there, it's on automatic, or see it stops. To put it back up, simply push up, you have to hold it down. One thing to note is I was driving down the road one day, sun was in my eyes, I didn't have my sunglasses. So I decided, why not put the shade down a little bit? Big mistake. The shade automatically came down all the way while I was on the road driving and I'm very lucky I didn't run into anything. There is a 12 volt cigarette lighter plug. We typically use it for our Garmin. Works well, just make sure you unplug this when you park because this does not get turned off. Uh, this is a microphone for the Bluetooth on the stereo. We can move it wherever we want to. This is the stereo, has a CD player, has an XM antenna on the roof. To turn it on, simply hit this top button. It'll come on. It's currently on the Pandora setting because we like to plug our phones into the USB connection, get a charge, play music. You can go through the different sources. There's auxiliary, Bluetooth audio, Bluetooth phone. Serious, there's our tuner. Volume. In order to turn it off, hold it down once and it'll just go to this screen. Hold it down again and it goes off completely. Again, the stereo is something that stays on even when the coach is off. DAC system. This can confuse some people. So this is your setting for the AC. It's always off no matter where the fan button is. Now, if I, am the, if I were to turn it on to AC, So that's off. These are your different settings if you want to go down for the feet, defrost, and then back off, heat all the way. If you have this all the way over and you turn on your air conditioning, the air coming out is going to be hot. So if you want cold air, this has to be all the way over. There's your parking brake. This is the lever to release it. This is the lever for to open your front hood. All right, and now the passenger area. <clears throat> this chair is manually controlled. There's a lever underneath, back and forth, and then another lever on the side that allows us to turn. Uh, one nice thing about this is you can actually flip this chair around if your slides are in. Sometimes we'll be boondocking and we like to do that. Back into position. And this lever is for getting your seat back and forth. Now I'm gonna have to get that back into my favorite position. This is the part of the coach I like the most. There's a desk that comes out, and this becomes my working station whenever we're camped. There's a nice map light. There are outlets over here. We currently have our voltmeter plugged in just to make sure we're not in low voltage. And plug that. So this outlet with USB ports actually works when you have the inverter on. There's another outlet down here that doesn't. There is a propane alarm. This is actually connected to the TV antenna. There's a button here that if you bring in cable from a park, you want to turn this off. However, if you want the TV antenna to work, that button has to be in and there's a green light that is on. Okay, so that's the driver passenger compartment. Now let's take a look at what we've got up here. Here's a nice cabinet. We like to keep all our books, maps, and everything in there. I did add another little catch here to keep everything from falling out on myself or Kate. Here is our entertainment system. We have a Blu-ray DVD player. 
as well as a five channel surround sound system. We have three speakers in the front, two in the back. Simply turn the system on and then you can go through the different inputs with this dial, FM, AM, USB. We like to plug our phones into the USB connection and just listen to Pandora, charge our devices. Uh, Blu-ray DVD player. And I also have my Xbox up here because there's a spare plug in the back along with an HDMI cable. And sometimes I'll even take the HDMI cable and run that to my laptop to watch things like Amazon or Netflix or something like that off of my computer. Turn that system off. And one very cool thing about all of this and the TVs, all of this will run off of our inverter. So all we have to do is turn the inverter on, it'll run this and multiple other things in the code. The AC system is controlled by this panel here. It's currently off. And in order to turn it on, select the mode button. There's cool, automatic, heat pump, that's our furnace, and just a fan. If I put this on cool, uh, we ha currently have it set to 71. I can check the inside temperature, which is 69. If I drop this below 69, the AC unit will come on, little hourglass that pops up, and once that goes away, the AC unit will start up. In the automatic mode, this will switch between your heat pump and your AC depending on what you set this at. So if we're 68 degrees inside, this is gonna put the heat on until we get to 61. Um, it'll go either way. Usually we leave it on heat pump or cool. Uh, when we go to unplug or turn off our generator, make sure that this is turned off before you do so. Otherwise you'll have some problems with your AC unit. We only have a single AC unit on the roof. It's the 15,000 Dometic BTU unit. Uh, it's a single zone for the whole RV. In order to get dual zone, you need dual AC units on the roof. Um, in order to run it, our generator either has to be running or we have to be plugged into a 30 amp connection. It will not work off of our um, 20 amp like household plug. The furnace actually, it does run off 12 volt. So the 12 volt powers the blower in the furnace and then it runs off propane. The heat pump is actually the AC unit and it reverses the cycle to send heat into the RV. So normally if it's above 40 degrees or so, we run the heat pump and save our gas. The AC return and outlet vents run the length of the coach. Uh, here is a return vent, here is the outlet. All of the return vents have these little filters on them which need to be cleaned about once a month. In order to do that, simply put your fingers in here and pull straight down. Normally I just clean these in the sink. When I'm done with it, I let them dry, put them back on here, and then simply push until they snap all the way in. Here's our TV antenna. It's currently up. If I wanted to bring it down, I'd just rotate this till it was all the way down. Make sure you always do that before you drive. I suggest having a checklist. We'll link to ours in this video. Uh, put it all the way back up. And if I wanna tune it, I simply pull this down and turn the antenna any direction to try and find that signal. Onto the control panel. So, this section here is for solar prep. There are wires on the roof that come in here for a charge controller, and then further more wires that run down through the coach and into the battery bay. Um, this is our digi level. If I turn it on, it'll show the status of all, all of our tanks. Fresh water, our LP gas is at half. We're currently uh, a third on our gray tank and our black waste tank. Select that again, it shows me the status of our chassis battery as well as our house battery. This button here will lock the step, so it's currently in the lock position. If I put it down, the steps will come in. When we park, we always leave it in the locked position. This is for our awning, we can extend and retract it. It's currently out, so if I retract it, I have to hold it down, let it start coming in, and then I can let it go the rest of the way. I don't have to continually hold it. If I want to stop it, I push the button in the other direction. This is very helpful if you have a tree and you want to put it out, 
but not go all the way, then you just stop. We also have this cool remote for the awning. The top is open and closed. Uh, this doesn't pertain to us. Some of the coaches have door awnings that this works on. Uh, and what I'm holding here is our slides are locked hosted. So this is our slide control. When the slides are in, we put this little post-it over because we end up locking our slides. We'll show you that later. So when we're not using it, stick it over here. In order to bring the slides in, simply hold the button until the slide is always all the way in. When going out, the out, you have to hold the out button for approximately three seconds before the slide will start to move. Uh, this is the battery disconnect. If I were to push off, it shuts off everything in the coach. You can still drive with it, but in order to run your generator or any of the appliances or lights in the coach, this has to be on. We have our inverter. Currently, this is in AC mode because we are plugged in at the campground. If I wanted to turn on the inverter, I would simply hit on and the inverter light will come on. We have a 600 watt inverter. This is our water heater control. Electric, on or up for on, down off. This is the gas side. So when we're not plugged in and we want to run the hot water heater, we'll turn the gas side on. It can be done in a campground as well. If there is a problem, this red light will go on. Simply turn it off, turn it back on, and try it a couple times. Sometimes there can be some air in the line if you just got your propane tank refilled or had it turned off for a while. Uh, and our hot water tank is six gallons, so it's enough for both of us to take a quick shower. Over the kitchen, we have a fantastic vent. There's a manual and an auto setting. If I put it in auto, I can actually set the temperature at which I want the vent to come on. And if I want to go in manual, I just select the speed from 100 to 10%. Uh, one very cool feature about this is if I just want to have the vent open, but I don't want the fan running, if I don't want to run down the batteries of the coach, I can open up the vent and then turn the fan off. Another interesting feature is a rain sensor. Like today when it's pouring, if we were out and we had the fans on, as soon as it starts to rain and water hits that sensor, it'll shut down all of our vents and close them. I can override that if I just hold this down. Red light will come on. And now I can open our vent. This comes in very handy when we're cooking in rain. We also just installed a fantastic vent cover over the vent, which prevents any rain from coming in. Now moving on to the kitchen. Over here underneath the sink, we have more storage. There's also a subwoofer for a surround sound system that passes through to here uh, we could we have more storage there's also a bypass for the water heater with instructions on how to use that a nice little cubby hole here we've got a double stainless steel sink both sides have covers so whenever we're camping we'll pull up this side we usually leave this here so that i can put my coffee grinder, one of the most important things in this coach, besides key. Uh, there's a nice light above the sink. There's an outlet here, three burner stove. In order to work the stove, turn it on to light. There's a spark button and then turn it back off. We have a convection oven and a microwave. The convection side is over here, microwave here. If I go to options, this is not touch screen. You actually have to use the arrows on here, um, but otherwise it's very easy to use. There is uh, one of Kate's fam favorite features is the light under here. So there's a hood light, medium, off, on, as well as a vent fan with multiple settings. It's off. Underneath here, um, we're currently hooked into city water power, but if we weren't, I would have to turn on the water pump in order to use the water. But we're currently hooked into city water, so we don't need that. Turn it off. And the lights. This is our patio light on, off. Um, ceiling lights for the front of the coach, the rear of the coach. 
this actually is on its own switch and then we have all the drawers so lots of drawer space all the way down um, one cool thing that Kate came up with is a use for old socks so these are all of our really nice glasses Kate puts them in socks and yes they are clean pop them in here and then they don't rattle around and break uh, we have our spice drawer up top and then odds and ends like coffee cups uh, and different various things the nice thing is all of these latch and they don't fall out while we're uh, driving this is the intake for the furnace there are a couple of vents in the kitchen under here is where we keep all of our pots and our Norcold refrigerator. Fairly nice sized freezer. Perfect size refrigerator for the two of us. And in order to work this, uh, there are multiple settings, right? We always keep it on auto. What auto does is if we're on AC power, like plugged in at the campground, this will always stay in AC mode. If we unplug, this will automatically go to the gas setting and run on propane. Um, off button and then gas so when this is lit we're running on gas one thing to note is that this starts flashing there could be air in the lines so you want to turn it off turn it back on try multiple times if it's still not working you can turn on the stove run the gas and then try this that should get the air out of the lines but we always keep it on auto there are cold settings from one to five we found that if we leave it on five, things in the refrigerator tend to freeze. So we typically leave it at either three or four. Uh, one thing I did forget to mention is there is a nice little storage area up here. And then the fantastic vent we showed you earlier. And this is the living room area. Over here, we have a three person couch. Uh, we've actually sat four adults here comfortably. Um, so this couch converts into a full bed. And I can show you how that works. So in order to convert this, there's a little handle over here. You just pull up. Watch out, Leo. Come on, bud. Good boy. So this pops out. There are two legs at the bottom. This flips down. And in the back here is a air mattress that is operated by plugging it in into the outlet that's back here. We've actually not tested this, uh, but it looks pretty comfortable. It folds out into a queen size bed. So if we ever have guests, uh, they can stay here. And to put this back together, you just pull up, lift this part up, push down slightly, And make sure this portion goes all the way in so that it can pop back in place. And right above the couch, we have three nice cabinets. So in here, we have a lot of clothes that we put in. Um, and as you can see, it's not full, so we still have a little extra room. These cabinets are great. They stay shut really well, and we've never had a problem with them coming open. And over here, in the living room, we have two switches. There's a ceiling light and a reading light. So I'm going to turn both off. So the reading light turns on these three lights. And then the ceiling light turns on the light right above. The one thing I really like about the living room is this little window over here. A lot of times I can sit out here, have my morning cup of coffee, and look out. Uh, especially when we're boondocking in the middle of the forest. It's usually a really beautiful view with elks um, and other animals running around. All of the windows in the living room have shades. There's a daytime shade that's really good for blocking out the sunlight. And these just pull and release. And then there's a nighttime shade that we put down at nighttime. One thing, be very careful when it's nighttime and make sure that you have the right shade down because if you have the daytime shade down and the lights are on in the coach, everyone outside can see what's going on. So 
so unless you feel like putting on a show make sure you put the right shade down uh, all of these windows do open the one over here has a latch on the top and it snaps into place and there's two buttons up here that you use to release and it drops down and you can close it these windows however have a knob and they turn open so turn to the right until it stops and that's as far as it'll go and then turn left to close it down we found a little bit of silicone lubricant works really well on these and one last little cool thing about this area is the tiny cabinet down below over here we store all of our remote controls and our car registration insurance card right here so it's easy to get to and all of these cabinets that I've shown you so far are accessible when the slides are in there are a few in the bedroom I'll show you later that aren't now we've moved into the dinette area uh, surprisingly this dinette fits four adults comfortably and we've put it to the test a few times the cool thing is this will actually convert into a bed so we have to remove all the cushions There are four pieces, and then once you remove the put cushions, there's a lever down below. Push the lever all the way to the other side, and then just push straight down. Once this table is down, uh, you can put all the cushions in to configure the bed, but before I do that, I wanna show you the cool compartments that are down here. So if you lift this up, there's actually a storage area um, and seat belts for additional passengers. So in the end here, we just have a random box that we're storing, um, but right here is the drawer that we can actually pull out. And there's the same compartment on that side. Okay, now to make the bed, just pop the cushions in. I like to put this one upright, sort of as a pillow. Then put the two big ones in. And there's a bed for a very short person or some kids one cool thing that I actually discover with this configuration is if we're watching television and our TV happens to be up front um, I can actually sit like this and enjoy it and there's enough room for two people and to put it back together just take the cushions back out simply lift up on the table until it's at the end Make sure to put the table back in the locking position. And one other thing I like to do is switch the cushions around. Uh, so if I've had the cushion on the left side for a while, I'll put it on the right side, just to make sure that there's a nice even distribution. One issue we do have with these cushions is they do slide out often when I'm sitting in them. So if you have a good solution to how to fix that, let us know in the comments below. And there you go, that's the dinette. And just to show you really quickly, the drawer that I was talking about earlier, just pull this out and you can access all the stuff this way. I love our pantry. Uh, this has multiple drawers and it comes all the way out. The drawers are really nice and smooth and I really like that. And they do sort of lock in place a bit uh, when I push it all the way in. And there are different height clearances so we can put the taller stuff at the bottom the shorter stuff in the middle and on the top. One of our first drives in the coach, we actually had this uh, door fly open because some of the drawers came loose and pushed it open. So Joe installed an additional latch and this has kept everything closed and it's been very helpful. Since we do a lot of dry camping, we love things in the coach that don't run off the battery and our clock is one of them. It's battery operated and to remove it to change the battery when it runs out there's a screw at the top just unscrew that pull it up and pull it out right over here is the dinette light we can turn this on and off specifically for this area so if we're having dinner at the dinette we put that on we have a nice full bathroom in here everything you'd normally find in a bathroom it's got a nice sink again in order to use the water in here for either the toilet or the sink if you're not hooked up to city water, you have to have the water pump on. Uh, we do have a heat pad in this coach. What this does is it sits underneath the 
tanks and in case they freeze we can turn it on and those will warm the tank so we can dump or you know not have our water freeze light switches same fantastic vent that we have in the kitchen we have an outlet here we like to keep a little night light just in case coming around lots of storage in the medicine cabinet another medicine cabinet up here most importantly we have our breakers and our fuses so there's a list of what everything corresponds to and most of them are here there's another small panel that's underneath the steering wheel underneath the sink tons of room for storage toilet paper holder and then there's storage in here where we keep our toilet paper but the nice thing is for shorter people you can actually stand on that the door has a magnet that goes all the way down, but we always latch it because it has popped open. Open the shower, and you can see I fit really well in here. But I had the, added this little nozzle. Um, I can turn the water on and off, which is very helpful when we're trying to take like a two minute shower. Um, places to put all your soaps. We hang a little squeegee in here to wipe everything down when we're done, and a nice skylight. On to the toilet. So this is operated by pushing your foot down slightly to fill it up with water. And when you're ready to flush, open the hole. And that's it. In the bedroom, we have two windows that will actually open. Uh, they're right next to the bed. They provide a little bit of airflow, but one thing in this coach I wish we had more of were windows that we could open. There is a nice big window here, again, day, Day and night shades. Day and night shades on those two windows. Uh, the bed itself is a queen. We've put our own mattress on this. We ditched the original. Uh, the nice thing is you can lift this whole bed. It's on shocks and there's storage underneath. Plenty of storage above the bed for different bedding materials and whatnot. And there are lights. So it's really handy. I love to read in bed or hang out on my phone. And this is a really nice place just to do that or watch TV. Over here is the entertainment system for the bedroom. We don't have surround sound. Everything is controlled by these two remotes. Uh, we have another two for the front set, but these will work on any TV in the coach. Um, Blu-ray player. Again, there's additional outlet in here and HDMI port if you wanted to plug in an Xbox, PlayStation, or bring in a satellite feed. Uh, TV here, the way to work it, there is an input. We're currently on TV. If I wanted to watch a Blu-ray, I'd go to Blu-ray. Satellite is the extra HDMI port. And this works the same for this TV or the front that back on TV and now I'm picking up anything coming in from the antenna and you can watch two different shows in the front and the back over the air uh, two lights underneath here's our emergency hatch flip these up jump out hopefully I'll never have to do it I don't know if I'll fit there are a ton of drawers underneath here they all pop all the way out lots of stuff the only problem here is when we do boondock and we don't put our slides out this bed comes all the way up here so that you can't open any of these drawers what we'll do is if there's anything we need daily access to we'll pull out some of that stuff and put it in another drawer in the coach two closets this one is tall enough to hang things I don't I just stick a bunch of stuff in there so in all the closets there are nice lights and finally we have a nice tall closet jackets shirts we put shoes on the bottom again there's a light in there as well now in the bedroom we have this door slides all the way across it'll lock in place and then we also have our light switch and this is the control for the slide out in the bedroom Again, we have the same post-it. When we bring it all the way in, we lock the slide, and then we put the post-it up. 
We're getting ready to take off and bring our giant full wall slide in. In order to do that, we always make sure the area is clear. So this driver's seat is put all the way forward so when the slide comes in, it doesn't hit it. We also cleared any carpeting in front as well as make sure all the drawers are closed and that we get anything out of there we need access to because once the slide is in, we won't be able to get to it until we put it out again. And also make sure Leo isn't in the way. Leo, come here, bud. On your bed. This control panel handles the full wall slide. To bring it in, I push up and I give it a few seconds and now the slide is coming in. We do have a thicker bed that we used to replace the original bed. So I'm just pushing the mattress down to make sure it fits properly. Now that the slide is all the way in, I'm going to lock it. We started doing this pretty much when we got the RV because we found that by locking the slide, the main one and the bedroom one, it makes the coach a lot more stable when we're driving. And as we turn, we don't feel the shift as much. So I'll show you how we do that. This tool was provided by Numar when we bought the coach and it's used to lock and unlock the slides. So in order to lock the slide, I hook the top and I put this piece right under the tab here and I push up and that locks the slide. To unlock the slide, I simply move this piece to the top of that center point and pull down and that will unlock the slide. Since we will be traveling, I'm going to lock the slide on this side as well as the other side. There is also a slide lock on this side. There's not much room. I tend to be the one locking all the slides. It's a little difficult for Joe to get in. So I have to slip this bar through. Take a peek to make sure I have this placement where I want it, similar to how I did it up front and then push up until it locks in place. One of the most important steps of locking the slide is making sure we put our post-it on the slide panel. So this post-it says slides are locked and we put this right over that. So when we do get to our next destination, we don't try to put the slide out without unlocking it. And the post has been very helpful. We use this up front and also for the bedroom slide. Always unlock the slide before putting it out. All right, this is part two of our walkthrough of our 2015 Newmar Base Star. It's a really nice day today and we can go around and show you all the features outside. There are two house batteries. We've upgraded these to six volt rather than the 12 volt that came with it. Uh, here is the solar wiring that's coming down from the roof. Uh, your oil fill is up here transmission fluid and then the oil dipstick is here this is the hydraulic system windshield wiper fluid air intake uh, most of the minor maintenance details you can take care of yourself and we're going to upload a video shortly to show you how to change the oil for this motorhome coming around the side side view cameras This is our shoe bay, but down here is the inverter and converter. There are lights in every bay. They're controlled inside via a switch, and then every light comes on and off. This is the water heater. Uh, one thing to be careful of is don't have, don't have this up when the water heater is on because a lot of heat does come out of here. This is the furnace. Again, same thing. You don't want that open, this door open when the furnace is running. And notice the door only goes up so far on these. Here is the fresh water tank. The sensors are here on the right side. And you can do a visual check, but this goes in thirds. So that's full, two thirds, one third. And the reason it doesn't go all the way down is this water tank, the bulk of it is here but then there's a big part that just goes across the top and it's flat. So it's a little misleading. Uh, the other thing we do is whenever we're filling up with water, 
we open this up and you can see the level on the side. Over here, this is the awning control. You can change the speed at which the awning will retract or the wind sensor by simply pushing this button. We like to keep it low at 12 just in case anything happens. This is a nice storage bay. The black tank is here. Again, sensors on the side. There is a HDMI port here for your DVD Blu-ray as well as your satellite. Uh, and the cable down from the antenna along with an outlet. This outlet has to be powered by either the generator or plugging in. It doesn't run, run off the inverter. But it's great if you want to put a TV out here or we even have rope lights that will plug in. There's this little break here. We run the cable there. And we have light outside. Down here we have our Onan. 4,000 watt generator. Well, there's an hour meter up here. In case you ever need to get to the generator, simply bring these tabs up, pull out. Uh, one nice feature is that I can start the generator with this switch. I can also check and change the oil. That's another video we're going to be putting up for you. It's very simple to do. There's a breaker switch. It's on the right side of where this switch is. It's down here. If you're ever running the generator, and you trip a breaker but nothing is tripped inside, come down here and switch this over. That's probably where the issue is. This rear bay has a nice pass-through. Uh, it's hard to tell with all of our stuff in there. Because on a lot of these doors, and I can't do it too much with this uh, slide out, but you can actually lift this up and there are three different notches over here for height so that you don't have to necessarily lean under the bay door. For any of you that have this coach or are planning on getting one with these similar doors, I would suggest going out and buying silicone lubricant. I had a hell of a time trying to get these up and down and a nice spray with some silicone lubricant fixed all that. We have a 5,000 pound tow hitch. We have our tow bar as well as our spare tire carrier. Uh, we will do a review on the spare tire carrier later, but all of that is back here, uh, ladder, the other side of that pass-through, this is where our 30 amp hookup is, as well as up here, there's an entrance for your um, for coax. If the RV park has satellite or cable, you just plug that in there. Another bay with a lot of room. Here's the gas cap, nothing special, 87. This particular coach holds 80 gallons of gas. This is our wet bay. Right now we have city water coming into the coach, but if I wanted to fill the tank, I simply need to turn this to the tank and we're filling up the fresh water tank. Any other time, always keep it on city, uh, especially if you're using the water pump. This is a black tank rinse. So hook this up and there are sprayers in the black tank that will help clean everything out when you're dumping outdoor shower there's another switch here for the water pump hot and cold water here's our dump pipe on the left is the turn this is the sewage tank and then the wastewater holding tank in order to dump it's always best to dump your black tank the sewage tank first once that's done dump the wastewater we've added this wastegate here because we've noticed that if we don't have that when we undid this cap, there would be a little residual water and you don't want that in your bay or on your hand. So now we can hook the hose directly up to this, open it up and no spillage, it's perfect. Another big bay, this is where I keep all my tools. Uh, but if you're gonna go up north uh, during the winter and you wanna winterize your coach, there is a hose here that you stick in the um, solution and it'll suck everything up your water pump is also back here in case you ever need to service it or replace it and this is a 25 gallon propane tank there's a meter here that you can read as well as the meter that's in the coach 
the meter here is much more accurate. You can see exactly where your uh, tank is. And when they fill it up, just let them in here. They can do it. Just make sure if you lift this up that you close it yourself because if you lift these on that little slider I showed you earlier and you go to push it down without putting it back down first, you could potentially damage these shocks. So make sure you're the person putting the door up and down. Another side view camera. One other feature I wanted to point out is across the whole front of the coach is the diamond shield. Uh, this helps prevent rock chips. It also protects uh, the paint up here from bugs and whatnot. Uh, there is a special cleaner we have for this and it's good to just go through every now and again and take the bugs off. I'm up on the roof and I wanted to give you a quick shot of a few things up here. Over in the corner, we have the XM radio antenna followed by the actual radio antenna. Here is our TV antenna, which is currently in the up position. This is a cool little feature over here. It's a Zamp solar, uh, solar panel, and this is to charge the chassis battery of the coach. So if it's sitting, it'll maintain that battery for you. We have two fantastic vents. This one has the cover on it, highly recommend it. This is the vent for the refrigerator, AC unit. This is a vent for the bathroom. This is the sunroof in the bathroom. Another vent back here for the toilet, for the black tank. And then one great feature is on the bedroom slide and our full wall slide, we have slide covers that go over both and help keep things dry and keep leaves off of the slide. And we've even put the slides in during heavy rain multiple times and not had any issues. Sometimes there's a little residual water on the sides, but otherwise we're fine. That's it for the walkthrough. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, leave a comment below and be sure to subscribe for more videos.